Hello everyone and great day from the Biomicans. We're really happy to share this time with you all here today and thank you for being here. The five of us from the Biomicans team are friends and colleagues from the Maryland Institute College of Arts Center for Social Design where we spent the past academic year in Baltimore, Maryland working towards a master's in social design. We spent a spring semester together in a multidisciplinary course called Biomimicry for Social Innovation through which we collaborated with mentors and community partners to submit a proposal to the Biomimicry Institute Global Ch Design Challenge which we are excited to talk about today. First, just a little bit of a background. The Center for Social Design's master program is dedicated to demonstrating the value of design in contributing to social justice and equity specifically by focusing on social literacy and design literacy to understand how local and community led initiatives can be a catalyst for complex social and systemic change the design literacy emphasized through this program is a discipline referred to commonly as human centered design a process which helps designers continuously orient towards the user by facilitating the creation of a project program idea intervention or opportunity with the actual people facing the challenge this could be everything from youth employment connections to resource distribution during a pandemic which we'll talk about later in any case regardless of your technical background this process is about acknowledging power dynamics and elevating lived experiences expertise when approaching social problems Similarly biomimicry is both a philosophy and design process which emphasizes looking to the expertise of nature to solve human problems especially those challenges we experience at the intersection of human society and our environment the biomimicry philosophy believes that the solutions to humans most pressing issues already exist in the strategies and systems found in the natural world and given the challenges we've come to face globally this year we believe that this is a really important perspective to maintain when designing for people to expand on this idea a little further we'd like to share a video our team produced for the biomimicry for the bottom of office of sustainability in celebration of earth day this year when you hear the word biomimicry what do you think of according to leaders in the field Biomimicry is the method of looking to nature to solve human problems. From something as simple as a needle that painlessly penetrates skin like a mosquito, to something as complex as a city, modeling their project funding distribution after the spreading of mushroom spores. No matter what the scale of the problem, nature has over 4.5 billion years worth of expertise to turn to. With many human constructed systems, straining under the pressure of the COVID-19 pandemic we are reminded now more than ever of our humbling relationship to the natural world Janine Benyes founder of the Biomimicry Institute said it best when we begin to see nature as a source of inspiration and ideas instead of a source of goods our respect for life and its adaptive ability grows as designers We are committed to elevating nature to understand that social issues are not disconnected from environmental issues. We commit to hold these life-centered principles as we rebuild a new normal. These are diversity, reciprocity, responsibility, adaptability, emergence, and alignment. In these times of isolation and uncertainty, this is a call to action to look to nature for inspiration. We can continue to find solace in the natural world, refuge in the fresh air, and reconnect to ourselves and each other. So, as you can start to see, both the human-centered and the biomimicry design process Hold the belief that the solutions to the challenges we face can already be found in existing expertise, be it through the lived experience of people or the natural forms, processes, and systems of nature. 
This intersection of human-centered design and biomimetic design is all we set out to explore and define through the biomimicry for social innovation course. Intentionally reconnecting our understanding of human design interventions into the context of the natural world ultimately expanded our idea of sustainability, which influenced the principles we used to maintain this perspective throughout the design process. These six life center principles are the throw lines we drew between our values as designers for social change and the inherent principles of the natural world. While we acknowledge these are the work in progress, ever evolving as we learn and grow, it was important to us to establish these principles before embarking on any kind of project. Holding true to these values throughout the design process helps us maintain our embedded connection to the environment around us and understand that whatever we're designing should ensure the right of life for all through. Diversity, celebrating the strength that an abundance of unique perspectives brings. Reciprocity, understanding that what benefits life also benefit yourself Responsibility, being accountable and ethical while designing and using resources optimally. Adaptability, holding the responsibility to be attuned to nature and responsive to its advice. Emergence, maintaining a perspective of how individual functions relate to a larger ecosystem. Alignment, Understanding that environmental issues have social ramifications and vice versa. What does all of this look like in practice? What can design do when we maintain our life central values throughout the process? To begin our conversation, we'd actually like to share an open look at our final submission to the Biomimicry Global Design Challenge. The COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in major disruptions in our food system, exasperating issues of food access around the world. In Baltimore, emergency responders worked overtime to coordinate assistance for food insecure communities. At the same time, grassroots efforts joined in an attempt to bridge the widening gap between food availability and food recovery. Still, challenges to align these efforts made it apparent there is a systemic issue of resource distribution and communication. In close partnership with the Baltimore Office of Sustainability, we wanted to understand how a resilient food system would recover from these disruptions. Understanding this context led to the development of our design challenge. How might we cultivate a more connected and responsive food system network to ensure food access during times of crisis? We first asked, how does nature distribute resources, especially in response to situations of isolation and disturbance? Looking to nature's unifying patterns, it was evident that reciprocity was the common thread of the biological strategies we discovered. Found in our own backyard of the Chesapeake Forest, we were especially inspired by the local symbiotic relationship between trees and mycelium networks. This mycorrhizal relationship embodies reciprocity, connectivity, and adaptability, as it facilitates communication and nutrient flow among trees, while the trees in turn provide sugar to mycelium. This exchange makes it possible for hub trees to nourish young saplings and demonstrates a unique way of staying connected despite social isolation. We translated this natural inspiration to design a symbiotic and interconnected food distribution infrastructure, like that between the trees and mycorrhizal network. My Oak Public Market is an online platform designed to increase food access to vulnerable populations by diversifying the distribution of resources to community hubs and individuals. Vendors are provided a low-risk platform to an expanded customer base. Reciprocally, customers can access this variety of products regardless of physical proximity, income, or telecommunication capability. By cultivating these new connections and aggregating valuable user data, MyOak Public Market simultaneously strengthens the resiliency of the Baltimore food system to face any crisis. 
In response to these times of crisis, My Oak Public Market ensures resources are shared where they are needed most. As designers working for the advancement of social justice and equity, we are committed to ensure food security for all. Through a symbiotic, community-centered approach, every resident in Baltimore would have equitable access to food with dignity, regardless of their socioeconomic status. The My Oak Public Market concept started here, though, with an open-ended question. This beginning design challenge was crafted word by word with a team of partners working across all aspects of the food systems, from policy to procurement. We did this to highlight the context of the challenge, which was food system networks in times of crisis, as well as uh, point out the function of the intended intervention, cultivating connection through existing resources to ensure food access for those who do not have adequate access. These are some of the amazing collaborators who helped us scope the design challenge. Um, they are pictured here and we really just wanted to take this moment to publicly thank them for their support and expertise throughout this whole process. I'm going to briefly set the stage of this challenge before we dive into the biomimetic processes, um, which ultimately led us to the development of the Myoke market. Um, after the pandemic hit us in March, we saw opposing issues in food availability. First, the amount of people requesting food rose dramatically in Baltimore City. Um, this was according to the Baltimore Office of Sustainability, who were tracking emergency food assistance requests. And according to them, about one third of the city was relying on food assistance within the first month of the pandemic. At the same time, um, as restaurants shut down, and producers lost their clients, this resulted in a surplus of unused food. There were hyper-localized efforts um, and partnerships, but overall the widespread distribution of resources was uncoordinated and left a lot of gaps. So the, the disconnect between those requiring food assistance and the surplus of unused food can be explained further by understanding the difference between food access and food availability. These concepts were first outlined in the Baltimore Food System Resiliency Advisory Report, and it highlights food access is really about the consumer's ability to get food. The main barriers being either physical or economic factors. Um, Food availability highlights the amount of resources flowing through the food system and the distribution of those resources largely out of the hands of the consumer. And this is affected by everything from pilot, um, policy to uh, like climate, climate effects. This is where the human-centered design process diverts into biomimetic. The goal is to look to nature first to understand how it might address this problem by mapping the context, digging into the function, and curating biologized questions that we could then pose to nature. For example, the pandemic in this case is characterized as a chaotic and unstable environment. We ask three questions. How does nature manage this disturbance in the community? How does nature depend on each other for resources? How does nature create connections across networks? These questions facilitated how we narrowed down to find inspiration in the natural ecosystems. The functional questions of how does natural respond to disturbance, isolation, and distribution of resources give us directions and we look to our own Baltimore and Maryland ecosystems for inspiration. Some inspirations we initially look at were old land fires as our analogous for a dis disturbance in the forest ecosystem. We focus on the forest ecosystem because it is a self-sustaining system where resources are distribution between trees. It was appropriate because trees are naturally isolated from one another and in a way exchange resources while maintaining physical distance. We also look at mycelium structures as the distributors 
of resources because trees and plants and as a social network and soil as the post disturbance recovery agents. We narrowed down to mycelium structures to specifically look at how nutrient and resources were distributed to these isolated beings. We further look at the relationship between the native white oak trees and the actomycorrhizal fungi found in Maryland and recognize three key characteristics reciprocity, connectivity, and adaptability. We were very happy and lucky to have the Mushroom Arts Festival's very own Robin Gonkel on our advisory board whose PhD work greatly helped our understanding of reciprocity in this case. Through her bioremediation collaborative participatory action research, we learn about the remediation trifecta of plants, mushrooms, and microbes. The entanglement of these three entities seeded the idea of reciprocity, reinforced by her explanation of ancient social networks of tree facilitated by mycorrhizal networks. In reference to our biologized questions about isolation and distribution of resources, this insight was incredibly, incredible relevant. We are also incredibly grateful to have been connected to William Padilla Brown and ironically via Robin and her connecting through this beloved mycology the enthusiast network. By sharing his work, William taught us not only the many function uses of mushrooms as ecological remediators and as power for human medicine, but also the symbolic importance of mushrooms and their inherent functions in ecosystem demonstrating adaptability, abundance, and reciprocity. The mycorrhizal network biologically inspired us to develop our idea. In nature, established hop trees are particularly important as primary nutrient producers to support young saplings within the network. This resource sharing is facilitated underground by mycorrhizal fungi through their hyphae, the root-like filament, collectively known as mycelium. White oak trees have developed a relationship with a type of mycorrhizal fungi called actomycorrhizae to facilitate these functions. Through this interconnected infrastructure, trees community share water, nutrients, and communication, such as distress signals, while the fungi are provided sugar to grow. As the mycorrhizal network expands, their high feed further breaks down to the transport nutrient otherwise unavailable to tree roots. Hello. Okay. So we translated this natural inspiration to design a symbiotic and interconnected food distribution infrastructure, like that between trees and the mycorrhizal network. Hub trees are translated to vendors and young saplings represent customers, including vulnerable populations. And mushrooms work as community hubs to develop partnerships to expand the resource network. This mycorrhizal network stands for the distribution of resources and communication within the system. And these biological inspirations led us to develop the idea of MyOak Public Market. The name MyOak is a combination of mycorrhizal network and oak tree. It is a reciprocal online platform rooted in Baltimore to increase food access to vulnerable populations and promote the economic potential of local food producers. Vendors are provided a low-risk platform to expand customer base and reciprocally customers can access a variety of products regardless of physical proximity, income, or telecommunication capacity. 
Vendors will list fresh prepared or excess food on the platform at the design period. And then the customers can then place their orders online by phone or in person at the nearest community hub. And once the orders are placed, the food will be packed and delivered to a central distribution location, which will then be channeled to each community hub. And the customers can either pick up from the nearest community hub or get home delivery with the community collaboration. And as in the case of mycelium structures, they not only distribute physical resources, but also act as communication channels and deliver warning signals. This distribution system also looks at feedback to continuously build upon, improve, and adapt as the system takes into account crucial communication channels. This feedback is important in achieving reciprocity within the service. While customers are able to get food, vendors and the city government receive feedback in order to better address where to direct excess food. This stronger relationship between the customer and vendor is essential in making this market work. And this is a mock-up of our user interface of my public market. We're really thrilled to share that this design was selected as a finalist for the Biomimicry Institute's Global Design Challenge, which means we've been admitted to their biomimicry launchpad to take this idea through an entrepreneurship accelerator. And while we're just beginning this journey of consumer discovery, outreach, prototype development, and testing, we are motivated to keep our life-centered principles and use what we learned about reciprocity and mycorrhizal network as we seek funding options to stand up this business on the market. And before we open up for questions and conversation, we want to leave you with this thought. As we grappled with the challenge of connecting all our learnings together into this design, Ava, one of our partners from the Baltimore Office of Sustainability reminded us, what was normal wasn't working for a lot of people. And this motivated us to keep working to demonstrate the critical need to connect human systems with the natural world for more equitable and sustainable futures. And after everything we've collectively seen and experienced this year as a species, it is clear we must remember that, in the words of our very own Robin, Symbiotic relationships are natural in this world, and we must create systems where flourishing and thriving are mutual. And we believe that reciprocity and symbiosis will save the world. Thank you for listening. And if you're interested in following what we do as we go through the Biomimicry Accelerator program and continue to develop the MyOak market concept, or if you just want to talk biomimicry, please don't hesitate to connect with us. Follow us at MyOak Market on Instagram or send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. And thank you again so much for listening. Hello. Welcome. Hey. Hey, thank you so much. Sasha, Anisha, thank you so much for, for joining us for Mushroom City Art Festival. Um, yeah, it's wonderful to, to connect with you two again. And um, so, so blown away by the, the work that you've done with the My Oak Project. And uh, yeah, yeah, it, this is just such a like, gratifying experience to be hosting uh, both of you. And uh, I was wondering if you could um, talk a little bit more um, like about uh, like the, the Mayoke uh, design and just like explain more like uh, like the relationship between the stakeholders and the project and just the, the flesh out the concept for us more. What was just in the presentation, mm -hmm. but we, partnered with the Baltimore Office of Sustainability. So initially, when we started the project um, and initial ideation, we were asked to focus on food waste because that was an issue that they wanted help with in the city. 
but a lot of things changed after COVID hit and that's where we made a pivot. So kind of where our idea mainly grew was still tying to the topic of food waste. Um, when the pandemic hit, there was just a lot of disruption in the food system and we saw on one hand increased food waste with you know restaurants being closed down um, and not having their food go to customers um, just problems with grocery stores um, people being hesitant to go out and buy food so there's kind of this excess food on one hand but also there's a lot of people you know suddenly unemployed there's people living in food deserts mm -hmm. that already had issues getting mm -hmm. food that the disruption in the food system just made it worse. And so that that was kind of this problem where there's excess food on one hand and then a lot of people needing it. Um, but at the same time, what we saw in Baltimore was a lot of this kind of need um, was being handled by grassroots organizations in Baltimore City and very community-led efforts. And what the Baltimore Office of Sustainability was doing was trying to track that and trying to help connect these organizations and efforts and try to get more people um, to know about what was happening and to possibly find resources and help support that work. And that's kind of where we had our question mm -hmm. form on how do we kind of help this problem while also connecting um, these like local vendors and community organizations. And that's kind of where our main stakeholders of the vendors and the community hubs came to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, talking about the idea itself, it's like that's kind of where we looked um, to the forest ecosystem for answers. And we sort of looked at woodland fires as examples of disturbances. We looked at soil. We looked at ants as social networks. Um, and then we looked at also mycelium and mushroom as distribution networks, as um, distributors of resources, um, connecting sort of the primary trees the to sort of young saplings, distributing nutrients, and at the same time also um, behaving as communication channels. Um, so, so they not only just sort of distributed food and um, water and minerals, but also warning signals and sort of feedback and communication. And that was, again, like an interesting thing that just really clicked um, with us because um, of the problem statement that Sasha just mentioned. Um, so mm -hmm. that was um, how it took off. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that was a big part of thinking through this, this like our market proposal is that it wasn't just the resource sharing of food, it was also the sharing of information mm -hmm. and um, getting more people involved and kind of having all these community-led efforts um, mm -hmm. kind of know more about what they're, everyone's doing. So clearing in a, a couple of ways the, the functions of the Wood Wide Web and, and you made it very uh, specific to the bio region too. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, looking um, to the the Chesapeake and just really um, being either, like very very specific um, in the the local ecosystem that you were looking towards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our main inspiration was the white oak tree, and mm -hmm. uh, and then how we kind of got mm -hmm. to that is before we kind of focused in on this. Um, mycorrhizal network, we really looked at different examples and we wanted to keep it region specific because that's the easiest way to get inspired mm -hmm. is by walking outside and seeing mm -hmm. what's already there. Mm -hmm. um, and there were 
a lot of other things that we were thinking of, like we looked at ants because they're very mm -hmm. social creatures and we mm -hmm. wanted to look at them for how they cooperate with one another. We also mm -hmm. looked at how forest fires function and we kind of mm -hmm. related that to how the pandemic is a big disruption and how mm -hmm. um, trying to find ways that forest fires, um, how mm -hmm. forests are able to regrow and how they are able to be resilient after things like that happen. Mm -hmm. And I think um, in that sense, sort of the trees and the forest ecosystem was so appropriate because trees are physically isolated always mm -hmm. and yet they always manage to have a very sustainable ecosystem that is, you know, beneficial to everybody, is, is reciprocal, is adaptive, is connective, and and just looking at like how isolation moved in our communities right now immediately, that this was seemed like the perfect um, inspiration to look at. Beautiful. Yeah, I, uh, well, so it is very sweet, the, the nod that I, I received in your, your presentation. Thank you. And, you know, I did have this, this feeling at one point, like I hadn't um, presented yet uh, to the class and it was, it ended up being a little bit later in the semester and I was like, I really think they need to hear about the wood wide web. I really think this is going to relate to what they're <laughs> doing all about resource flows. Yeah. So, um, it was really uh, awesome to, um, yeah, when I finally, I, I saw your, your final design. I was like, oh, oh wow. Um, and, you know, it's exciting, right? That, that we're, um, there, I mean, biomim biomimicry is a, is a, it's a huge thing. You know, this is like a, um, an undertap science, but um, as, as you've been realizing, uh, so much uh, changes, um, our relationship with uh, with nature, right? Uh, that we're somewhat seen as like we think of ourselves as outside nature, and that this is a way of uh, reestablishing and re reconnecting to nature and looking mm -hmm. uh, to that wisdom. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, so such a powerful thing to do in a social design program. And was it um, so, Lee? Um, who is one of the, the co-chairs of uh, social design at, at MICA. Um, was it Lee's concept for the biomimicry class that he invited you to? Yeah. Yeah, we're not the first cohort in social design to submit something or even participate oh, in the true. launch pad. That's so uh, it's something that's happened before and it was, uh, we're very happy that he was on board with that. Um, I've known about biomimicry as a concept. I've definitely learned so much more about it and realized um, I didn't really like understand it as well as I thought before going into class. Um, and then, yeah, Sean showing the website for the Biomimicry Institute, which is a great resource if you wanna learn more about biomimicry. Um, I think the, the best way to kind of understand the concept initially, I think, is through looking at examples. Because um, mm -hmm. you say it and you think you get it, but it's kind of like seeing how, seeing the inspiration and then seeing kind of the idea developed is when I feel like it really clicks. So I definitely right. recommend right. the website. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, understand the concept yeah. in an embodied way. Mm -hmm. I think the most common um, ways that it's usually portrayed is through products. And mm -hmm. I think that was like the challenge for us was how do you sort of um, take inspiration from systems and, you know, learn from systems that are not usually intangible and um, how can you design something that you may not necessarily be able to see or is not form based or, um, you know, is more of structured oriented and sort of based on very different values. Um, but I, th I think that that was one of the key um, experiences that we really sort of, yeah, enjoyed. Yeah, and the class was really experiential, right? Like mm -hmm. we would play like, you know, music of, from like the rain, sounds of the mm -hmm. rainforest, right? And then mm -hmm. we would like pick cards and like describe how we were like a specific animal. 
and um, yeah. um, the field trip uh, to the uh, to the aquarium. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely a lot of fun activities. Um, and yeah, and it's also like, I think that's a big part of the reconnection of just like being outside you. There's something you gain a lot by like kind of being asked to take a pause and just like not think exactly on what you're making, like whether it's a product or a service. And like, I think that element of having to clear your mind is, um, is really helpful just in designing anything. Yeah. Oh, we have a, we have a question here. Um, would be interested in understanding ant behavior better. How much do we understand about the rule set used by individuals for the emergence of swarm intelligence? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'm trying to think back on ants. We, we like, to, yeah, yeah, to be transparent, we're not really like, experts on mushrooms or ants. Um, so we, you might know more than us to be completely transparent. We kind of do research and then once we hit the inspiration, um, mm -hmm. we go forward from there. But I think- uh, But you researched thing, some, yeah. Yeah, I think one thing with ants that was really interesting we learned is their connection to um, fungi actually, mm -hmm. and how they help spreading um, their area and where they grow. Mm -hmm. And uh, even with looking at ants, it's how their role in the whole forest ecosystem. And um, it's just always surprising how everything is really connected. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think um, even giving a nod to your um, ideas on reciprocity, Robin. Um, yeah, I think that was the key takeaway was that the ants and fungi have a really interesting reciprocal relationship where like ants give them food and protection and the fungi actually give them um, food back that they can digest and continue to grow their colonies. Um, the reciprocal relationship between ants and fungi, which is nice because they're, um, I don't remember if Will shared this in his talk, but uh, he grows cordyceps. And cordyceps um, are a parasitizing fungi. And like you'll like hear Paul Stamets talk about mushrooms popping out of the top of ants' heads. And, and so that I think sometimes is the, the first uh, relationship to, to spring to mind. Um, so the the parasitism, uh, but yeah, bringing bringing it back again into the the reciprocity too, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, what was there another um, question? Oh, okay. Um, were there some things that you would like to highlight more about this project? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I guess um, we are just to. Uh, reiterate that we're now in, in the biomimicry accelerator. And mm -hmm. so basically what we're doing is what we presented here is kind of the blueprint and um, ideal of what we want to develop. But now we're kind of getting into the nitty gritty and figuring out how we can actually make a market like this function. Um, and we would love any feedback or help like we're we're serious please contact us um if you have any ideas um suggestions connections mm -hmm. we'd love to hear from you mm -hmm. yeah. yeah thank you so much um, yeah it's wonderful hosting both of you and just uh yeah so so excited for the, the possibilities. And so um, when when do you find out more about whether you move uh, further along in the, the design challenge? Oh, so um, we're actually the finalists in the design challenge. So they've got mm -hmm. 10 finalists and mm -hmm. the 10 finalists have to go through what is known as the biometry launch pad. Right. Um, so that's more like an accelerator. So um, mm -hmm. the accelerator will go on for a year. 
um so it's more of an entrepreneurial um outlook so you're looking at the feasibility of the solution really going and talking to the stakeholders looking at financials and funding and then at the end i think that there is another pitch for um the ray of hope prize um which i think is like another segment so that's to happen next year i think okay 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 yeah thank you yeah thank you robin and thanks for yeah and thanks for being part of the class um oh oh my yeah it yeah. was yeah. <laughs> it was awesome and we definitely learned a lot from you oh, so yeah well, thank, thank you. you yeah thank you um it was uh it was a really gratifying experience for me and um helped bring a lot of a lot of things full circle and connect different worlds for me at my god so um yay all right yeah. well yeah <laughs> see you later